Today we're going to teach you a little bit about the PKAs of the side chains on amino acids. First, we'll start with glycine, the simplest one. This amino group has a PKA of 10. The nitrogen can stabilize that positive charge. Um, whereas the acid part of the amino acid, this hydrogen has a PKA of 2 to 2.4. And that's because the negative charge or the electrons are being inductively withdrawn through this nitrogen group because it's electronegative, so it's stable. Serine has a pKa of 16. This group is what we're talking about, and that looks like water. That's the one we've memorized throughout the semester. Same thing with threonine has a pKa of 16. Looks like water. Cysteine is the one that's a little bit different. It has um, a sulfur group, so it lowers the pKa to about 10, making it slightly um, more acidic, and that's because the sulfur is bigger and squishier than oxygen and can better hold that negative charge, therefore stabilizing the conjugate base. Okay, we're going to talk about tryptophan, W. Uh, the thing we need to remember is that the pKa is going to be super high, and this is because when it's protonated, it keeps the aromaticity of both those rings, and so it's going to stay that way pretty much all the time. It's going to stay protonated. The next is tyrosine, Y. Here we would think that this is going to be closer to the pKa of water of 16, but it's actually quite a bit lower, it's at 10. This is because the conjugate base, that negative charge, is going to be stabilized via resonance, and therefore we're going to have a lower pKa, which is 10. The next is histidine, H. Histidine, the nitrogen right here, is going to be 6.8. The important thing to remember though is under physiological conditions or in your body, you're going to find an equal amount of protonated and deprotonated forms of histidine. All right, so I'm going to talk first about aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Um, the pKa of the, uh, the H on this aspartic acid is 4. That's considerably lower than the normal carboxylic acid of 4.5. Well, why is that? Um, well, the bond here is losing electron density to the electronegative nitrogen inductively and will therefore be more acidic. And a quick way to remember aspartic acid that at its D is just start at the, the carbon here, A, B, C, D. And then glut glutamic acid, start the carbon here, A, B, C, D, E. And uh, that'll always help you remember. Um, the pKa is not quite as low as, as aspartic acid, and that's because it's further away from the electron, electronegative atom. Lysine, on the other hand, just normal pKa of, of 10, um, it's so far away from the electronegative atoms, it's not resonating, it's not doing anything, we don't see any difference. Now arginine <clears throat> uh, has a higher pKa than we would expect, it's more or more basic. Well, why is that? Um, the reason is because this actually has a positive charge on it, and that's being shared between these other three nitrogens via resonance. And I, I've drawn one of the resonance structures there, and that's why it has a pKa of 12. And that's everything about pKs.